Hey, it's Brenda Meller with Meller Marketing. You're back again for another edition of Social Media Pie, where I am slicing up some great interviews with people from my network. And today I'm really excited because I've got a fellow Troy Chamber member that's joining me here today, Darren Lawson. Hey, Darren, how are you doing today? Great. Well, great to have you here today, Darren. And I'm I'm having a little bit of a why high hiccup at my house right now, guys. So if I happen to freeze up, just give it a second. It's kind of like hitting the ketchup bottle. It'll it'll come back here in a second. Um, and I um, I lo I love the fact that we can do conversations like these today, Darren. And you know, a week or so back, we were on a um, a Zoom call, which was a Troy Chamber networking event. Um, really a lot of fun. Right. And um, part of the the room we went around discussion, you know, the room we were talking about, gosh, how is the pandemic affecting our business? And um, I think they were, there was like a an ask and a challenge type of a thing. And I threw out, um, I think, one of the challenges I was dealing with. And then the, the ask I put out was, hey, if any fellow Troy Chamber members want to join me on a LinkedIn Live, and we're broadcasting now from LinkedIn and also to Facebook, I said, hey, reach out and let me know. And, and Darren was one of the very first who said, yeah. hey, that might be kind of fun. So so here we are virtually. Yeah, right? sure. <laughs> yeah, um, a, lot, a lot of fun. I appreciate yeah. you having me. Good. So we're, we're going to jump into the conversation in just a second here, guys. But what I would like to encourage you to do, if you're watching this on LinkedIn, if you're watching this on Facebook, live or playback, I want you to drop a comment below. You can see here I have a little thing scrolling along here that says, please share this video. But I'd love to know if you are watching live, just drop a comment below and just say hello, or you can say hi from, let us know the city or the country that you're joining us from. And um, later on, we'll have the opportunity to ask questions of Darren as it relates to today's topic, which I'm gonna throw up on the screen here now. And we're gonna be talking about sales and sales management during the pandemic, You know, having better selling conversations. And what really appealed to me about this topic when, when Darren was talking about it is, you know, gosh, business needs to continue right now, but we're in a really kind of critical and it can be kind of an awkward time. You know, how do you have these conversations given what's happening here in the market? So I, you know, kind of selfishly, guys, I am really looking forward to this topic because I'm struggling with this. Is it OK for me to reach out to prospects and kind of check in and say, how are you doing? And then initiate those conversations as it relates to what I'm doing for my business, what I'm selling for consulting services. So I'm looking forward to the topic. I'm sure you are as well. So if you have any questions about this delicate subject in such interesting times, you know, definitely drop your comment below. And a little bit later on, we'll um, we'll take the opportunity to to take your questions. So Darren, so why don't you start with if you could um, tell us a little bit about your background, what you do, and then let's let's start talking about sales management during the pandemic. All right, great. Yeah, um, so I'm a, a partner with uh, Sandler Sales Training in Troy. Yeah, been in sales uh, for a long time. Um, if I date myself, uh, in about 43 years now in sales. Started back, way back as a caddy and uh, was a, uh, my first career, uh, I guess, would be I was a full-time uh, golf instructor for 26 years. So I bring a lot of my knowledge from that into what I do today on a day-to-day -day basis with salespeople and sales managers and uh, got into uh, technology sales after that for about 10 years, so uh, in very um, large accounts. So I have a, a good background in, in uh, the complex sale, I guess, uh, versus the, the retail selling. Uh, a little bit different, but uh, the conversations really still are the same. And um, so today, um, I really enjoy and, and what attracted me to Sandler um, why we became a Sandler sales trainer was, uh, you know, all I heard uh, from people that took it was, I wish I had taken it, you know, 25 years ago. And uh, the process and the communication style that we teach and, and that uh, they learn uh, sticks with them. Okay. And that was always my thing as a golf instructor was, you know, long-term reinforcement. And there's lots of moving parts and lots of things that we have to do as business people uh, salespeople, business owners to make it happen, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so uh, the the whole process and the way they put it together through the years really appealed to me, and I, I really wanted to uh, share that um, with people and help them as much as they can. And I guess that's really kind of the 
the idea today um, is really seeing where I can help them. And, okay. you know, you have a couple of concerns. And one of the challenges in that Troy Chamber, I don't know if you remember, but you're kind of asking about how do you, you know, uh, decide who, who you give free talks to and yeah. who you join and get free information. And, yeah, and if I you know, can jump if I could jump in just yeah, for a second there, Darren. So my, my question to the Troy Chamber group, and I'm I'm if you guys know me, if you follow me on social media, I am all about sharing free information. And um, I also am self-employed and I don't get a paycheck anymore from employers. And I, I'm um don't get me wrong, I am so happy where I'm at right now. And I would rather be working for myself right now than working for an organization and wondering the big question mark, you know, will my job be affected? I mean, my right. my job has been impacted, but I um I know and I believe in myself. So my question for the group is I still get approached for speaking engagements. And um, in the past, I could be a little bit more selective and say, if you have a speaker budget, let's, you know, continue the conversation. And if not, you know, here are some free resources. But now my question is, do I turn away those non-paid? Um, and where do I where do I hold the line on my value, given what's happening in the market? And and I asked the question of the group and Darren was one of the first to reach out to me and, you know, give me some advice on that. So, so thanks for letting me interject there. Yeah, well, hopefully, um, I don't know if you had a chance to use the advice, but uh, appreciate you uh, having a little conversation. And basically, um, you know, you mind if I share? Uh, no, please go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, so basically, um, is you don't want to give up your price. So, so if you feel like you you still want to, you know, discount it or give them value and and do it for free right now, and you know, um, maybe it's a an association and and they're you know, watching their money right now and they don't want to spend it um, is still charge them, but, but discount it to zero yeah. um, so that you know that you're getting your full value out of it. Um, kind of like a, a lawyer does pro bono work. I think I use that example with you. Um, and it's still the value. You're still going to give the same uh, great information, great presentation, but you know, internally that you're still getting that worth out of yourself. And um, when you're okay with that, uh, then you could decide the associations and groups and businesses that you, you know, may, may give out some free tips or free short talks um, that you're still okay with yourself. Um, and uh, that tends to, to work really well. Um, yeah. And then once, once everything gets going, then it's, uh, you're still used to asking for your, you know, what you feel is worth and you don't have to try to figure that out again. Yeah. And what I, like, stopped. what I liked about that tip too is, um, you know, still ask when, when you're being asked to, to speak for free or to give away services for free, let them know, you know, this would normally be a, a um, for a one hour presentation for so many people, it'd be a $1,500 um, talk. Um, and if they mm -hmm. say, gosh, we, we normally would have the budget, but we don't right now because of the pandemic and because of the reduction in our, our membership sales or things like that, you know, and they say, would you be willing to give it away for free? And then, you know, part of what you and I were talking about is, well, well, yes, mm -hmm. yes, if, you know, can you give me a LinkedIn recommendation afterwards and talk about why you booked me um, for this engagement? And can you tell people mm -hmm. what you learned from listening to me? And um, I would also like to ask for, you know, whether it is a, an ad on the website or an opportunity to get an access to the the membership or the attendee list or something else, but some other concessions so that you're you're still. Yeah, well, I owe you. Yeah, well, and I owe you. You scratch my back, I scratch yours, right? <laughs> In terms of that approach. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought that was a really nice. Yeah, that, that makes. Yeah, that makes both sides, you know, win win. It makes makes you, you know, feel like you're getting your value and and they're they're doing their part yeah so yeah very good yeah that was a, that was a great conversation so yeah so um, let's talk have about you had a chance to use it or yeah you know i have i um i actually okay. reached out to someone who who had that question and and i originally i said do you have a speaker budget and she said i don't think so let me check and then she came back and i i mentioned i don't get an employer paycheck so i have to ask the question especially you know these these are challenging sure. times for me and my family too and she came back and she said, no, I don't, but I understand. And, you know, we'll be in touch, you know, after life gets back to normal. Um, and then I reached back out to her and I said, you know, I've been giving this some more thought. Um, I, I'd love the chance for some visibility. So um, would be happy as a one time to, to offer this to your group. But here's what I'm asking for. 
everybody posts on LinkedIn about it, or you know, um, we take some pictures or screen captures and share them along and talk about what you learn. And you give me a recommendation. And I think there's one other thing I asked her for, and she said, absolutely, deal. <laughs> and then we proceeded with it. So it was okay, nice. it was great advice, Darren. And what I appreciate about your approach too is you're not just pushing the sale selfishly you're trying to understand it's more of like a consulting conversation that you're you're having you know what are they trying to get out of it what are you trying to get out of it and where can we meet each other in the middle to help each other out right yeah the and, and that's really the the whole you know i guess theme of today is you know yeah. um if you're if you are being pushy and and really trying to get get more out of it than than giving and, and making it mutual um you know, for both of you, uh, you will feel like uh, it's not the right thing to do. Um, and, and unfortunately, you know, a lot of businesses and salespeople are doing that right now. They just stop working. Yeah. Um, they, they feel like it's a vacation. And um, when, you know, when you open the show is, should you be calling, you know, people, should you be, you know, contacting? Uh, absolutely. Um, yeah. So what's your answer there? I mean, and and I'm guessing some people are watching this right now because they are in a sales role and they're they're feeling mm -hmm. hesitant. They don't want to seem opportunistic, if that's the right word. I think I heard there's two words, opportunistic and uh, I can't think of the, the, the flip side of that. But they, they want to be um, taking they don't want to feel like they're taking advantage of the situation, but they also are feeling like, well, gosh, I have to do my job. So. So what advice would you offer to salespeople right now? You know, do they change their approach? And if so, what what do they change about that approach? Yeah, the well, the, the, there's a couple of ways to, to look at it. it is um, there's there's different ways and if uh, you don't have a system of classifying your your accounts, the, the people that you're gonna be calling on, uh, you absolutely wanna keep your behavior up. Um, and then uh, so if uh, you're not getting anywhere because nothing's happening, uh, mm -hmm. what you want to do is uh, change it from a sales call to a, a, a conversation. Solve, solve the problem of having a conversation and okay. being a good neighbor, being a good business partner, maybe talk about um, things happening in the industry. Uh, so those, those are some things that they can do uh, in that, that realm. If they are, uh, you know, a little more advanced and have some bigger accounts and have some account classifications. We have a, a system that uh, we, we like to share and, and it's really um, uh, appropriate this time. And it's called the CARE program, K-A-R-E. Okay. And it's uh, classify each each account that you have or each person that, you know, business that you want to do business with. And you're reaching out and cold calling and emailing and maybe reaching out on LinkedIn and, and doing all those things. Um, you classify them if they're a current customer and they're doing business and, and they're going to keep buying from you, uh, that may be a, a keep. So okay. you're going to have, you know, conversations of, you know, um, how the economy is impacting, you know, inventories and timelines and, you know, just really kind of see where they're at and see what's happening. Uh, maybe obtain referrals from them. You know, why do they keep doing business and, you know, try to become that big referral partner. Uh, because they're already an, a nice business partner with you. Uh, the accounts that you don't have would be, um, you know, your attain, the A. So, you know, mark those as attain. And those are the, the normal things that uh, we're fearful of, you know, of having the bad conversation and not doing the right things and, and you know, the think it overs and the no's that we hear and it's not a good time and, you know, contact me later, which are, you know, still think it overs and brush offs and because they want to be nice. You're taking the time to, you know, call and try to do business, but they, they, they may need you in the future. So they're going to be nice to you, even though they're, it's really a no. Um, again, LinkedIn int in introductions are, uh, you know, part of the pain. So, uh, okay. and with the pain and, and certain accounts, especially the larger accounts, uh, if you know one of the one of the guidelines we look at uh, in sales and sales management is if you don't have five contacts in that company, um, mm -hmm. you're probably going to have a hard time getting into that company and really? doing business with them. Yeah, so yeah. Tell me, tell me why, that's, that's <clears throat> Yeah, so 
um, you may have one contact and you think, oh, yeah, you know, got a good, good person and, and they're a coach and they're say they're going to introduce you to the decision maker and make all these things happen. And, and sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, especially right now, well, that person may be laid off or he may he or she may decide to go to a different business. Now you're stuck at ground zero. OK, so if you have four or five, six, you know, 10 contacts or more. Yeah. Um, through then you still have live business you, you keep that conversation going and okay. uh, that really seems to help the the people that call on these larger companies mm-hmm. um, uh, a story not not from us locally but a, a Sandler story that I've heard um, uh, one of the Sandler trainers was trying to get into um, oh now I'm gonna draw a blank on it but the, okay. um, the outdoor um, uh, Sportswear, you know, they have all the, the uh, cold uh, for running, and okay. you know, one one person had like five hundred contacts. Wow! And it made it really easy to do the business. But the first person they were t- were talking to left that company. Okay. But he had four four hundred ninety nine more contacts to to go through. So wow. um, he ended up doing a, a really good business, and um, you know, a lot of sales training and in the different divisions and customer care for their customer service team and. So, so that would be, you know, um, a tame, okay. uh, a little bit of work, a little bit of work is required, you know, for that to happen, right? To, yeah. Uh, to get that deep into a, an account. Okay. Uh, recapture is, um, you know, maybe an account that you had in the past um, that you want to try to do business with again. So okay. re-engaging with them, uh, recapturing. Uh, you know, maybe even talking about meetings held in the past, what mm-hmm. went wrong, what they didn't like, okay. uh, and also get maybe getting a referral, mm-hmm. right? Because you, you, just because they said no at that time uh, doesn't mean that they're not going to say yes right now. Okay. Um, so, and then E would be, you know, expand. Um, you know, the companies that might do a little business with you, but you want to sell different products and expand your your services into, uh, those would be, you know, uh, definitely some conversations of getting, uh, what we just talked about, getting more, uh, internal in- introductions. Yeah. Right. So the different departments, so you can expand maybe into the marketing department or the accounting department or, yeah. uh, you know, inventory, uh, logistics. And, uh, those are all things people are willing to have conversations of, mm-hmm. uh, what most of the time we find is most people aren't willing to have the same conversation over and over. Gotcha. Um, so you kind of have to change up how you uh, initially set up that call and, and what you want out of the call, the call and be clear about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you do that, you'll, you'll have a lot of success mm-hmm. and you'll want to make calls and you want to do business because it becomes fun again, because you're creating all this new um, activity for yourself. Uh, the hard, the hard part of the the care program when you go through your accounts and uh, the is you think you know one could be a keep and a expand, but you got to decide which one. Okay. Which is it? Do you really want to expand them or do you just want to keep them? And, and they're a little bit different, you know, strategies on them. Uh, but when you go through that exercise, it, it gives you a good way to go. Okay, now I know what I'm going to talk about. Instead of just, okay, I, I have an account, uh, you know, my database and I'm going to call them, but what am I going to talk to them about? Right. Uh, so it really, it really gives you that strategy. And especially during this time, uh, these companies really want to know what they might need or what might be coming up in the future. And in, in most of the sales worlds, except the, the, the quick sale, uh, what you do now shows up in three months to six months that's usually. True. That's true. So if you're not, if you stop doing stuff now in three months, where are you going to be? Yeah, you got to continually invest in that that marketing and networking yeah. effort because that's going to make the difference. I love that, and I love how yeah. the qualifications. I mean, you even made me think, and I put them back on on the screen all at once too because okay, the, perfect. You know, for those of the the viewers that are watching right now, um, I mean, you just made me think, Darren, about several approaches. I mean, as an independent consultant, um, there's certain categories of services that I'm offering, but I hadn't thought about um, classifying my, my customers or even my prospects in this way. And you even made me think about 
look, as you know, um, I could reach out to a client contact at, at an organization and maybe there's a referral opportunity for someone else to do the same type of service in a different department. I hadn't thought right. about that. So, and, and, you know, I, I'm a big proponent of, of using LinkedIn as a platform. It sounds like you are as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I love your thought. And well, I'm learning, I'm learning. <laughs> I, you're going to learn from me too. Um, but, sure. uh, you know, connecting with most people from the organizations is key. But what I also do, and I, just to add to the conversation, if I have a client who's jumping up and down, I'm having great conversations. I had one just the other day and he was, he, you know, as part of the conversation, he said, what else can I do to help your business right now? And, you know, we're continuing to engage on, on some strategy discussions about LinkedIn. But I, I said, well, one thing that would really help me out is could you give me a LinkedIn recommendation? And he said, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I haven't believe I haven't believe I haven't even done that yet. So I sent him the request. He sent it back to me. It's it's now showing on my profile. But um, this is something I can now merchandise with with proposals and on social right. media. And, um, you know, in in bringing into your approach. When I reach out to folks, um, you know, and re-engage with them, I might say, hey, you know, have you heard what people like X Y Z is saying about working with Mellor Market? Right. You know, so I can use that for my approach. So so really good. I like that yeah, classification. Right. Nice. Yeah. The, the, on the, you know, the management side of it um, now becomes a, a little easier when, when the clarity and the classifications get there and, and your conversations now uh, really help you uh, share within your organization too, or others that you might as a, as a group do doing business with, because now there's, there, there's true action and, and true things that you need to attain during those conversations instead of just, you know, I call them. Okay, well, I want to call them because you want to yeah. progress the you know the business forwards at some point. Yeah, you know, uh, but there is a time for uh, what we would call a nurturing call, also, just okay. to check in and you okay. know, have a have a normal business you know friendly conversation because you know them and okay. um, and, and that's okay too. Uh, so I that, that solves a problem. I have a question sure. about here, and I apologize for jumping in and interrupting. Okay, and, and I'm no, no, no problem. For those of you who are listening, if you've experienced this too, people I've been connected with on LinkedIn for years, never heard from them outside of the initial connection. We had a little bit of a dialogue and that was it. And now I get this either an email or a, or a lengthy message. It seems like it's very heartfelt. Hope this message is finding you well and healthy and your family, are you doing okay? You're safe at home, you know? And, and it starts with, how are you doing? How are things going for you and your business? And then it quickly turns on its heels. And hey, if you're interested in signing up for my XYZ service, check out this right. link. And here's my scheduling tool. And here's my website. And then I'm just like sales or shoves down my throat with this person I I have no professional relationship with. I, I mean, other than, I had to look up their profile and go, when did we even connect? <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or like the email that is, um, it's a reach out in your, your words, nurturing email, but I have never heard from this person. Never. I've never heard from this person. And it could just be a reach out email, but I feel like it's a, it's a veiled sales approach because as soon as I reply back um, to this person, I know the next thing is going to be, Hey, can we jump on a phone call and I can talk to you about my XYZ product offering? Um, yeah. so, so I'm wondering, those of you who are listening, have you guys gotten these messages? Um, are you getting the sales pitches that are veiled or the out of the blue? I'm gonna call them out of the blue check-in messages from people you don't even ever talk to, you know, asking about that. So Darren, you know, what are your thoughts there? I mean, is this an approach we should take? You know, just going through our Rolodex and LinkedIn connections and just pinging everyone and it's a numbers game when we keep our fingers crossed or what do you, what are your thoughts there? Um, no, I, I don't think it's a, it's a numbers game. Um, uh, I mean, you, there, there's arguments for that, right? I mean, eventually you can say it's a numbers game, but it really isn't. You really have to be clear of who your target market is. And, um, I, I get those same emails um, because lead generation and, you know, all sorts of things that people want to sell. And, and some of them I've looked at and some, you know, I don't, but the, the, the approach is, is really what, where, where we would change the approach. So okay. the first part of the email is okay. Right. The, hey, how you doing? Hope you're, you know, doing well. Yeah. Um, so you had a, a, a conference, uh, you know, just checking in with you. But right. you just added right. something in there that they're not doing. There's no right. connection. Right. There's no connection point. Okay. So, so then that would be the nurture, right? Yeah. Okay. 
yeah. So, so if they do that, then, then you'd be like, okay, cool. Well, I don't even remember this, right. When, yeah. when I connected with them, but let me see. Oh yeah. I do kind of remember, you know, three years ago I connected. Um, I'll send him a quick email. Now he starts the, the relationship. Yeah. Now, if, it, if it's in your target market, now it might be perfect because you might've gone, Oh, I didn't think of that person. Well, maybe I'll see what, what they have to say now. Yeah. Right. So that would be a good, good way to use LinkedIn. Um, the mm-hmm. way they're doing it is more the traditional, you know, salesy, pushy. Right. And, you know, Direct. It right. doesn't work. People don't like that. And I, I don't you know, like um, people. Yeah. I, I don't like not like salespeople. I just don't like the aggressive sales approach. And I feel like in, in the day and age right. That we're right now, in the, in the times of COVID, so to speak, um, you know, just the mood is different. The focus is different. And it just feels even more icky to me as an approach. Just, that's a marketing term, guys, icky. That's the best word icky. I can call. But I'm like, <laughs> what I like, though, is, I mean, you can say, hey, checking in, how are you doing? Um, you know, and I, I don't even mind people saying, how, you know, how has this impacted your business um, if I'm conversational with you? But there's a trust element there. If I've never talked to you, now you want me to pour out my heart to you and say, this is impacting my business. But I like when you say, hey, um, and even reminding people, you may have recalled we for we first connected when we met at the Troy Chamber event, you know, nonprofit conference mm-hmm. a years ago. Or, um, you know, we we haven't met Brenda, but I've been following your updates a while on LinkedIn. I found them really helpful. Um, and I just thought I'm a little bit slower right now in my business. Maybe I'd reach out and see if you're open to chatting sometime. Um, and even sometimes the people will say, I'm not looking to sell to you. I'm just looking to connect. And you know, then I make that decision. You know, do I do I take that sure. or engage? But yeah. I appreciate that approach a little bit yeah and, that, and that's really what you know we, we said earlier um especially with your speaking engagements is, is if it's in your target market it may be worth a phone call sure if it's not a target market then it's it's no it's not the right fit and mm-hmm. and that's really okay mm-hmm. and, and most most salespeople, business owners are afraid to say that because they, they are fearing loss of a sale or loss of a customer or, right. um, but really they're not because it was never a customer anyway, or never mm-hmm. the right fit. Um, so you have to, you know, um, really, um, you know, I've said it a few times, but the, the clearer you are on who your target market is and who you want to do business with and who you want to communicate to, uh, the better your conversations will be. Okay. And um, and, that, and that's really what is needed in this, this time. Uh, and people appreciate that um, because now it becomes a, uh, you know, a win-win, adult to adult, um, business to business. You know, however you want to say it, but, but a good conversation, and that's what we, we we strive for, right? Everyone likes to have good conversations. We like to leave and go, "Wow, that person was great. I really enjoyed that." Um, you know, I'm not going to do business now, but maybe in the future I will. Or I have someone that I want to refer them to that really needs their help, or yeah, let's do business together. Mm-hmm. And and those are great things um, that you want to have happen because that's why we're all in business. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm taking when, some liberties on what I just heard yeah, you. Yeah, go ahead. But I, I kind of, sure. I'm throwing this as little banners underneath little tips for, for okay. folks to remember, but focusing on the conversation, not on the sale. And I think in this in this day that we're mm-hmm. in right now where our the attention has changed every for everyone, every business is impacted. Um, we're all working out of our home offices now. We've got kids in the background and Wi-Fi that's funny. I mean, our, yeah. our challenges are different. And when you're focusing on the conversation and not on the sale, I think that that um, genuineness comes out. The authenticity is very clear. Um, when I don't mm-hmm. feel like I have to put my guard up because I feel like Darren's going to sell to me any minute now, but I, I really feel like, and when you reach out to right. me at the free chamber, I didn't feel like you were trying to push a sale on me. I'm like, you were giving me free advice. And then you said, hey, let's talk about this, this LinkedIn live, you know, interview. But I, I didn't um, yeah. get, oh, here comes the salesperson, you know, <laughs> it was a conversation, right. you know. Yeah, the um, probably probably the most important thing that, that um, I would say that I, uh, that I could share today is, is your conversation should always be about the other person mm-hmm. that you're having that conversation with. And um, just like today, um, this is designed for me to talk more than you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. For, for by design. 
and a conversation if I were to call you in a sales environment or a business and you weren't expecting it, um, I'm actually going to try to get you to talk 70% of the time mm, okay. because it's about you mm-hmm. and, and um, I want to listen. And when those communications happen, uh, that's, mm-hmm. that's a good selling environment. That's a, that's a good interaction. Um, okay. If you test yourself at the end of a conversation and you say, you know, mm-hmm. I spoke 70% of the time, probably not the greatest sales conversation you've ever had. Okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah. so you want to, you know, do a lot of internal checking. Yeah. So what about for folks that work for, um, you work for a team and you all have mm-hmm. quotas you're looking to reach or, you know, you've, you, there's, there's something looming over top of you, which is um, if I don't reach my sales goals, I'm going to be the next person. My head's on the line, you know? Um, so you've got this pressure underneath you. Or, or from above you even of, of meeting those sales goals. And then you think about, well, Darren told me I should speak 70% of the time, but I need to get my sales. I have an urgency. Um, you know, still you recommend that approach. So don't, you know, I, it sounds like the relationship and the, the conversation is really key. And in, in the sale is something that's, that's building into that three to six month cycle. Is that right? Yeah. I, I mean, you, you, you can have, uh, an accelerated conversation. I'm just saying that that's the, the typical time frame it takes from an initial meeting, sure. you know, on larger sales, you know, uh, bigger corporations to 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 do some diagnosing and surveys and you know exactly what the problem is, and then you know budgets and decision makers and uh, if you can get all that to happen as quick as you can, I mean, then that's yeah. that's what you should do. Right. Um, but uh, if you can't, then you but you still have to have those conversations and. Um, uh, hopefully, I didn't come across and say you're just having a conversation to have a conversation. No, I, you, you still I, want, you still I, need to achieve. Like, go ahead. No, we all need. To, I mean, we need to have you know money. I need to pay my mortgage. I need to buy groceries. I I have bills. Mm-hmm. I have vendors. I need to pay. So I mean, it's you know, it's okay to to make right. money in business, and it's okay to to earn a profit in business, but. Um, sure. I think what I heard from you, which is really important, is um, don't go into that conversation with this is the only thing I'm trying to get out of it is the sale, because the relationship is really going to be key. Um, whether that sale occurs now, which would be great, or a week from now, a month from now, three months from now, or those referrals might come from that conversation. It shouldn't be the only thing. I mean, meaning you can't just turn off the blinders to what's happening in the rest of the world. But I think it's still, you know, I mean, we're having a conversation about sales and sales management right. during the mm-hmm. pandemic. I mean, we have to have our businesses need to continue. So right. I, which is why I brought you on, because I was like, gosh, he's he's sure. going to have some great advice to offer because this is what you do for a living. Right. I mean, you, right. people yeah, do. You, you, you really can't force anyone to buy from you at any any time. Mm-hmm. Uh, the idea is to get them to decide to do business with you mm-hmm. and. And if you're being pushy and, you know, uh, forceful and I got to get it done now, uh, no one likes that pressure. Right. Um, and you're, and your, your prospect that's in front of you is still probably going to say no, mm-hmm. but you could, you could have the best talking and best product features and benefits and, yeah. you know, best PowerPoints and <laughs> videos, you know, whatever it is <laughs> in your presentation and they're still going to say no. Yeah, um, be, be, because yeah. you're not you're not letting them discover that they need you to help them. Mm-hmm. Um, really and what, go ahead. I said really good point. And uh, what I'm going to do right now, Darren, is um, I want to if sure. you could kind of go to LinkedIn and see what questions and comments have been coming in from. Sure, folks. sure. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, so we're up to, I think, around 156 views so far of our video. So thank you guys oh. for watching. Um, and I would love it. I'm just going to throw throw the, the reminder on the screen again here, too. If you're watching this, definitely click to share it with your network and help to spread the word and, and some really great advice coming in here um, from Darren today. I see I see Sheila Denstad from the Troy Chamber is on the session. Sheila, we gave you a couple of good uh-huh. shout outs there. Uh, and I'll give some additional shout outs. Mavita Burris, uh, Catherine Biggenho, uh, Sheila Denstad, Kellyanne Holcomb. Um, let's see. We have Jacob Levy, Scott Natmeyer. Uh, let's see what else on here. We've got Anna, Anja Harmon from Grand Rapids. We've got a lot of Metro Detroit and then a couple of folks from outside the area here as well. Oh, nice. So um, so D- Scott has a question for you, Darren. 
Um, okay. The question that Scott's asking is, what do you think about asking for advice or mentoring to create to ask legitimate information you need? Creating a relationship of thanks. I found your help, um, your tip helpful or useful. Creating personal relationships. So, what do you think about that? Can you say that first part again? It sounds so like asking, a three or four part question. About, yeah, he's he's saying, and I'll just break this up a little bit. What do you think about okay. asking for advice or mentoring? to ask for legitimate information that you need. So reaching out to people in your network, it doesn't sound like Scott, you're looking for necessarily a sale, but you're saying you're reaching out to people to ask people in your network for advice or mentor mentoring. Scott, what are your thoughts about reaching out to people in your network to ask for advice? Yeah, I, I, I guess, yeah, that, that would be, you know, um, uh, a nurturing call basically. Okay. Um, yeah, and that would be one that, you, you know, you're not keeping, attaining, recapturing, or expanding, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if it's a target market, um, then you could classify it as one of those care elements. But if it's just a, you know, a, a market expert, and they're willing to give you some time, and you you need some advice, it, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. That's developing relationships. That's like, you know, getting to know a speaker before and after a, a seminar, right? Um, yeah. You never know when you're going to need that relationship or mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and you never know what information you're going to get out of that question that you're going to ask. Um, but no, that, that would be great. And some people love to do that. Other people, they don't really like to share like that. But okay. uh, if you find one that loves to share, then yeah, okay. use it as a learning experience. You Good. Know, for Good sure. So a um, couple other uh, shout outs here. Uh, Oluwadara from joining us from Nigeria. So we are international, Darren. Oh. I feel about that. You're All right. today. <laughs> uh, we also have Javed joining us from India. Hi, Javed. I'm wondering what time of day it is um, for you there. We have Puda joining us from Bur Bur Burkina Faso. Uh, Angela is from Grand Rapids. We have Kelly uh, listening from home, working for Fogo de Chao. I thought she said Texas, but I think she was saying thanks. But she's a fellow oh, okay. <laughs> chamber member. We have Laura right. joining us from Ohio, Diane from Houston. Hi, Diane. Thanks for joining us. Nice. And um, yeah, we're just having other other folks that are kind of popping in. So guys, if you have any questions for, for Darren, definitely drop those in. Paul Sherwood just added a comment in here too, Darren. And he said, as a sales professional, and I'm sure you can speak to this and you probably echo his um, thoughts here. As a sales professional, Paul's saying he's always wanted people to feel like they've made a purchase from me, not that they were sold. So the approach there, yeah. right? So, yes. so thoughts on that. Make, making sure they want to buy it from you. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That no. That's 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 exactly what you want to have happen. And um, and you know, some sometimes uh, you know, uh, the old pushy sales type of uh, process that people have uh, works mm -hmm. in spite of you know having good conversations. So uh, we would want to. In this day and age, have more control, more relaxed, more nurturing, uh, and you know, I guess in, in in real estate, you know, the location, location, location is always the thing they say, right? And mm -hmm. in, in sales and in Sandler, it's nurture, nurture, nurture. Mm, love um, it. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, for some, it's easy to do. For others, it's really hard to do. Um, mm -hmm. But when you get that, then that creates that win-win. You know. Uh, situation for you and you'll, you'll close more business, uh, even, even during, you know, pandemics and yeah. wars and, and everything else. And so, yeah. Be good. So, um, as we, as we kind of round out our conversation here today, I'm just going to pull up your website up on the screen. I hope you don't mind Darren, give you guys a little bit of a plug. No, no, that'd be great. <laughs> so it's, uh, <laughs> Yeah. No, no, don't do that. You wouldn't want to look at our website anyway. I, I love it when um what I like to do too is um you know let me as the host sell you and you know when I'm in advance, you know, find I like to find a buddy, you know, and, and sometimes when we're doing our round the room introductions, if I find a client who's mm -hmm. at an event um and I know what they do and they know what I do, I give a plug for their business in my intro, they give a plug, you know, back and forth. It's a little oh, bit nice. reciprocal. But um, I'm going to just drop this up on screen if you guys are interested in learning more about the work that um, Darren and his team are doing and you're looking for some help and guidance on, um, you know, selling and sales management during the pandemic or even beyond, check out his website. And then also, Darren, I'm going to pull your LinkedIn URL up here on screen too. 
It'll take me just a second to load this up. But are you open to accepting invitations from people on LinkedIn or just followers? Or what's your what's your kind of philosophy there? Yeah, either either one. Um, become a lot more active on LinkedIn, and um, so. Uh, but uh, yeah, any any way uh, you think I might be able to help or okay. reasons why we should connect, then I'm good with that. All right, perfect. And I'm going to keep that up on screen so you guys can connect with Darren on LinkedIn. What I would encourage you to do is when you invite him to connect, mention today's webinar, mention the, the broadcast that we did here today on sales and sales management during the pandemic. Tell him that Brenda sent you to and um, if you're a fellow Troy Chamber member, you know, you might see Darren at some of the uh, virtual, I think they're calling them virtual coffee hours or virtual cocktail hours. I don't know. Yeah, they may, um, basically have taken the, the events and convert them into virtual. That's so right. there's, uh, you know, di different jams and coffee and yeah. uh, leadership, uh, you know, all the different things they provide uh, for uh, now we're doing virtually because well, we have to, um, yeah. Yeah, no <laughs> but uh, it's been great. It, it really has been great. Yeah, the, uh, Everyone's been uh, really quick to jump on the technology and participate and, uh, you know, technology uh, may have little glitches here and there, but for the most part, uh, they go off without any hitches. And yeah, so those, those are great events to, to be yeah. part of. We do okay. We we get onto the the virtual zooms, and I think we're all kind of figuring those those things out. So so Darren, yeah. in closing today, any kind of final comments for the group or final tips that you'd like to offer on this on this the subject of selling during the pandemic or, or sales? Yeah, uh, yeah. I just again, thanks for having me on, and and appreciate it. Um, hopefully, I provided some value to everyone out there. And um, the, the I guess the two things is you know have super clarity on you know why you why you're going to have a conversation uh, during these times uh, and uh, really think about um, classifying your account so that you can keep that clarity. Yeah. Uh, the K, K, you know, the care program, K A R E. Uh, yeah. And I think that will really help um, give you some motivation to, to, to do your behaviors and to make your calls and um, because we'll be out of this uh, hopefully soon and yeah. uh, you'll be ready. Yeah, um, your pipeline will be full. You'll be closing sales, and uh, it'll be just a, a little blip on our screen, and yeah. uh, we'll we'll be moving forward. And that's really what what we do as sales professionals. Um, mm -hmm. We're really the the front line of a business. Uh, if we don't do anything, business doesn't do anything. So absolutely, um, we have to keep selling. So yeah, and selling know. is not a bad thing. I mean, we all need to be selling in order to do business for our businesses to be yep. viable for this economy to be strong, for our communities and our, our nation and our state and everything to be strong as well. So so thank you, Daisy. Darren. I really appreciate the Pretty conversation good. today. You've given me some great things yeah, to appreciate about my business and I know our viewers have really enjoyed it as well. So thank you again, Darren. All right, I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, guys, have a great day, be safe. And if you're not already um, subscribing to my e-news, I'm gonna drop the address. Let's see if I can put it up on screen here real quick. Um, <laughs> subscribe and you'll get notifications for future broadcasts on, on things. And if you're also, if you happen to be watching this in playback, I would still encourage you to leave a comment and, and like it on whatever network, whether it's Facebook, LinkedIn, later on, we're going to have this video up on YouTube as well. Maybe in the future, I might have this in on a podcast too, but definitely leave a comment. If you have any questions for Darren, you can either reach out to him on LinkedIn or leave a comment in on the video and I'll share the link so that he can get back to you guys. All right. Everybody stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you on the other side, Darren. We'll, we'll get a cup of coffee and we'll meet in person at some point too. <laughs> awesome. All right. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.